Hey everyone, welcome to the video. My name is Amanda. I'm a second year vet student and today we're going to be talking about my top 10 vet school essentials. One of the things that I get asked all the time is what are the essentials to have if you're a vet student or if you're starting vet school. I was going to make this video earlier, but I wanted to give myself a chance to experience online learning versus in-person learning and see if my essentials changed between the two years. So my first year of vet school was completely in-person. We did labs and lectures all in class, whereas this year we're learning completely online. We are just about finished my first semester of online schooling, and I have to say that a lot of my essentials are pretty much the same from first year till now, with the exception of a few. So I have made a list of 10 things that I feel like I could not go through vet school without. These are things that I use basically every single day, and I honestly don't know if I could get through vet school without them. I also thought this would be a great video to post right before Christmas because if you are like me and you're leaving your Christmas shopping till the very last minute, this might give you some ideas if you know a vet student in your life or if you are a vet student and you just want to treat yourself. With that being said, if you guys are interested in purchasing any of the things that I've talked about in this video, I am going to go ahead and link all of the products down below in my description box. I will say a disclaimer, some of the links in my description are affiliate links, which means that if you click on those links and you choose to purchase the product through the link that I provide, I may or may not get a small commission from the product. This is by no means me trying to pressure you into buying these products products, but like I said, they're there if you want to use them and just know that if you do, thank you. You're helping a poor vet student. <laughs> so before we get started and talk about the 10 products that I honestly cannot live without, I just wanted to say if you're not subscribed to this channel, please feel free to subscribe down below. And if you like this video and want to see more videos about vet school essentials or things that I feel like I need to go through the vet program, please feel free to like this video or comment down below. And let's get right into my top 10 vet school essentials. Okay, so my first vet school essential may be a given and maybe something that you just think is common sense to have when you're going through a vet program but it is honestly something that I couldn't be a vet without so I had to include it in this video and that is my stethoscope. So this stethoscope was one that was gifted to me by my school as I was welcomed into the veterinary profession. I'm not sure if this is a common thing where when you're welcomed into the profession you're gifted a stethoscope or not, but I thought I would include my stethoscope just in case you are looking for a good one or you're a pre-vet student and you want to invest in a stethoscope that you can use when you're at clinics. So this stethoscope is the 3M Lipman Classic 3, I believe. I will double check that and link it down below. So many things, so many crucial parts of a physical exam involve using your stethoscope and and it's one of the best tools that you can possibly use as a vet. I know Lippmann has a bunch of really fancy stethoscopes, but if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I personally don't think you need one as a vet student. As you're going through the program, you're basically just learning how to actually listen to heart and lung sounds. And if you have a super complicated stethoscope, I don't think you're going to be getting the full use out of it that you possibly can because you just don't need those fancy tools while you're a student. Now, if you go off after vet school and specialize, then feel free to go ahead and indulge in those fancy stethoscopes, but I feel like one that is like this is all that you need as a vet student. And I like the color of mine too. It kind of matches my Christmas tree actually. <laughs> so my second essential is scrubs. Now this is one of the items that I feel like has changed in the amount that I use them versus first and second year with learning online. In first year, I was in scrubs sometimes multiple times a week, whereas I feel like now in second year, now that we're doing a lot of our labs from home, I don't need to be in scrubs as often. However, anytime we are working with the small animals or anytime we're doing our surgical or asepsis skills, we are in our scrubs. I indulged a little bit and I do have one pair of fig scrubs, which I absolutely love. They're so comfortable. I would recommend getting between two to three pairs of scrubs and then if you're planning on working at a clinic through the summer I would recommend four to five different pairs and if I'm being completely honest with you guys I'm on a student budget and I can't afford to buy four to five different pairs of fig scrubs so on top of the pair of fig scrubs that I have I also have multiple other pairs of scrubs I've bulked up my scrubs collection by shopping on the medical scrubs collection and this is a website that offers multiple different brands of scrubs from very cheap to 
more expensive. They have scrubs that you would typically find in like a Walmart or a superstore, but then they also have really nice brands like Grey's Anatomy and Cherokee. I will link their website down below because they have really great sales going on right now and they normally have sales going on. So if you are shopping on a budget and you do wanna get multiple pairs of scrubs, but you don't have a ton of money to spend on them, definitely go check out their website because they have price ranges from super cheap to more expensive. And the quality of their scrubs, I honestly have used some of their scrubs for four, five plus years and they've held up really great. Okay, so now that we've talked about scrubs and something that you would use on more of the small animal side of things, let's switch over to large animal and my third essential in vet school and that is coveralls. So these are my coveralls that I currently have. Personally, I find that I go through coveralls faster than I do scrubs just because they get 10 times dirtier than my scrubs typically do. And I would recommend getting a pair of short sleeve coveralls and a pair of long sleeve coveralls. Having the short sleeve versus the long sleeve coveralls is nice in terms of temperature regulation. So the short sleeve pair is the one that I typically wear in the summer or in the fall time, whereas the long sleeve ones are super nice to have in the winter. However, there are some activities in vet school that you are going to need specific coveralls for. So for example, my pair of short sleeve coveralls I have to wear when we're doing cow palpations. This allows you to put a full length glove on your arm and so that you're not adding extra material inside the cow when you're palpating. I do find that my coveralls get way dirtier than my scrubs do and I would definitely recommend having multiple pairs of each. Okay, so now that we've talked about what you're gonna wear in vet school, let's talk about the actual school part of vet school. And my fourth essential is something to take notes on. So personally, my preferred way of taking notes and the two devices that I use to get through vet school is my iPad and my MacBook. As of right now, I am currently taking notes on my iPad and annotating all of my lectures on my iPad. And I use my laptop to watch the lectures. Currently right now, I'm using my laptop to edit my YouTube videos as well. So that's why I feel like it's essential for me to have both. However, I definitely think you could get away with either or an iPad or a laptop. And it kind of just is personal preference on how you like to learn. But especially this year with learning being online, I think it's so important to have a good device to be able to learn on because basically vet school is on my laptop or on my iPad. I will talk a little bit more later on in the video of how I take notes on my iPad and some of the apps that I use, but I would highly recommend it. I love it. It's new to me this year, but I find my note taking and how I'm retaining information in lectures has improved a lot compared to first year and I think a lot of that is due to the fact that I'm taking notes on my iPad now. But either way, I would highly recommend a MacBook or an iPad to go through vet school with. Okay, so now that we've talked about what devices I use to watch my lectures on, let's move into my fifth, is this my fifth essential? Yes, my fifth essential and that is coffee. Okay, my fifth essential is not actually coffee. It's what I put my coffee in. And if you are a vet student, you know my struggle, but coffee has been one of the things that is getting me through my semester this year. There have been a lot of long nights. There have been a lot of early mornings and coffee is one of the things that I look forward to every single day. Oh man. That makes me sound like an addict. <laughs> because I am drinking coffee every single day, and even beforehand, I would drink tea almost every single day, I decided to invest in some really good tumblers or travel mugs. And the reason for that is because sometimes I make my coffee at eight in the morning and then I don't leave my desk until 12 o'clock. And sometimes it takes me four hours to drink my coffee, but if I don't have something that is insulated like this and I just use a mug, my coffee is ice cold by lunchtime. So having something that is insulated that will keep my drink drinks hot or cold depending on how I like them has been really useful for the mornings where I am stuck at my desk for four hours. On top of that, once we get back into real life and we're actually going to campus more, these are the two tumblers that I trust enough to put in my bag and actually carry liquid to school with me because the seal on these lids is insane. I've literally had them upside down in my bag and there has been no leakage whatsoever. So these are the two that I feel comfortable enough putting liquid in with my laptop and my iPad. So like I said, some days I I literally don't leave my desk for four hours, which is probably very unhealthy for you, but that is how it happens some days. This year more than ever, I am so glad that I have a comfortable desk chair. 
I bought this chair in my first year of vet school and honestly, 2020 Amanda is thanking past Amanda for her selection choice in chairs because this is one of the most comfortable desk chairs I've ever sat in. I got this chair from Ikea and I love it because it has a mesh back, it has a removable seat cover so it's easy to wash, and it also has optional armrests which I personally chose to add the armrests on just for my own comfort purposes. But the very best feature about this chair is that the back reclines, which is so nice if I just want to like lean back in my lecture and be like, okay, now I'm sleeping. I'm not sure if this would have been one of my essentials in first year, but now that I am doing vet school from my desk in my bedroom, this has been an absolute must. And I feel like if I had an uncomfortable chair, this would be even more important. But the fact that it's been so comfortable, it kind of slipped my mind until I was making this list. Okay, so now that we've talked about six of my essentials, let's move on to number seven. And number seven, seven is a suture pad and suture materials. So at OVC starting in first year, we start practicing different suture patterns and this continues on all the way into fourth year. In our first year, we were actually gifted this daisy that we could practice our sutures on. And the reason why we were gifted this is because it has all of the different layers that you would typically see in a surgical patient. So that's really important on learning which tissue layers you need to grab for certain suture patterns. But I found this was pretty bulky and if I just wanted to take it with me on the go, it took up a lot of room in my backpack. So I went ahead and I actually purchased this suture pad right here. This is a suture pad that I got off of Amazon and I really like it to just practice my skin sutures or to just get a feel of how certain suture patterns are supposed to go. It's not great for taking different tissue layers because I don't know if you can see, but the cuts in it are not super deep. So you can really only take like a superficial layer to suture. But for practicing overall patterns and for just getting the hang of how suturing feels and getting that into muscle memory, this suture pad has been awesome. And like I said, it's so easy to travel with. And then to actually do the suturing, you're going to need a suture kit. These are basic skills that you're going to take with you out into practice. So I feel like it's so important to get a good grasp on them while you're in vet school and practice as much as you possibly can. And this suture pad and my suture kit have made that easy and possible. And honestly, I love suturing and I just do it to relax some nights because I think it's very soothing. <laughs> the next two essentials I'm actually going to group together because they are the apps or the tools that I use in all of my lectures and to keep keep me on track of my schedule so far. So essentials number eight and nine are good notes and notion. Like I mentioned earlier on in the video, I am annotating all of my lecture slides on my iPad and the app that I use to do that is GoodNotes. I know there's a big debate between Notability and GoodNotes. I personally have only ever had GoodNotes, but I'm super happy with it and I don't feel the need to try out Notability. So I can't comment on the difference between the two, but one of my favorite things about GoodNotes is the organizational abilities on the app. So this is currently how I have my GoodNotes organized and these, folders are for each of my different classes. And then the way I personally like to organize things is if you click on a specific class folder and you click on a unit in it, I have it organized so that I have lectures, labs, and then any additional notes for that unit. And then I keep all of my lecture PowerPoints in there. And if I open one, you can see that I highlight on my lectures and I write on them quite a bit. And like I mentioned before, I think I'm learning a lot better in lectures now because I'm actually paying attention in the lectures and actively taking notes. In previous years, I would just listen to the lecture and highlight stuff on my computer, but I found I zoned out quite a bit. Whereas now that I'm actually writing on my notes and formatting things in a way that makes sense to me and is going to make my learning easier, I feel like I'm actually retaining a lot more content from lectures than I was before. At the beginning of the year, I was also making study guides for one of my courses and I was doing that on GoodNotes as well. So that's kind of what they look like. The study guide making has kind of been paused for a little bit. The first unit of the course that I was making it for, I felt like worked really well to make study guides for. However, as I'm going through the rest of the units, a lot of the stuff is just pure memorization. So 
I'm finding that it's kind of a waste of my time to make study guides for those lectures when I have all of the content on the lecture slides already. So I've kind of stopped the study guide making and I've been studying off the actual lecture slides, especially because I'm making notes on the lecture slides already. I just find it's easier to just study directly off those and it's a better use of my time. However, some of the courses going forward, I might start making study guides just based on how they're presented and how the professor lectures in those courses. But either way, if you are a person who likes to make study guides or likes to hand write your notes, I would definitely recommend the iPad and using good notes for that. Now the second app that I'm using on my iPad and also on my computer is Notion. Notion is the ultimate productivity app and I am so glad I discovered it this year. It has single-handedly been the thing that has kept me on track this semester. Notion has completely replaced any of my physical planners and I basically use it as a digital planner now. But my absolute favorite thing that I've been using on Notion right now is my master schedule. So I downloaded this template from Janice Studies and on her school template she had this master study tab. So this is what my master schedule looks like and basically I have put every single due date that I need to get done from September to April into this master schedule and I like it because I can categorize what the actual task is. So I put the due date in, I categorize what class it's for and then I also categorize what type of task it is, whether it's a quiz, an assignment, or an exam. This has basically acted as a massive to-do list for me and with school being online this year, I found it very hard to kind of keep on track of the things that were going on or figure out what I needed to get done next and this master sheet has kept me on track and I have not missed a single thing this semester, which I'm super proud about. There are so many other ways to use Notion and to increase your productivity. I have yet to kind of explore the other ways and the master list has been kind of my main thing that I've done this semester, but I'm really excited to try it out in different semesters and figure out how I can increase my productivity even more. So we've talked about the nine previous things. Number 10 is kind of a weird one and may not specifically apply to you, but it's something that I have recently discovered and that is Navali prep questions. So the NAVALI is actually the North American Veterinary Licensing Exam, and it's the massive exam that I have to write in my fourth year of vet school. I need to pass this exam to be licensed and to actually go out and practice and be a real vet. So this exam is kind of a big deal. And while I am not actually studying for it in my second year of vet school, I do like to kind of get an idea of what the exam is going to be like. And because of that, I signed up for these daily NAVALI prep questions. And the two sites that I use for that is Zuku and Vet Prep. So every day I get a question from each of those places and it's basically like a practice Navali question. And although I'm only in second year and I haven't learned a ton of this stuff yet, I just find it really useful to get given these questions and just to kind of see what information they're going to be testing on the Navali. I've also been saving all of these questions in a Navali folder so that once it comes time to me actually studying for the Navali, I'll have all these example questions to practice. As of right now, I'm I'm getting more questions wrong than I'm getting right which I mean kind of makes sense because I'm only in my second year and a lot of this stuff I haven't even learned yet but it's been a really great tool to just get an idea of what the questions are going to be like and honestly when I get a question right I get so excited so that's just been kind of like a highlight of my day and now every day I look forward to getting my prep question of the day so if you are like me and you have to write a licensing exam at the end of your vet school journey but you are not in North America definitely see if you can find a website or a study page that offers questions like these that you can review once a day. Okay, so those are my top 10 vet school essentials. Sorry, this video was probably 10 years long, but like I said, these are things that I can't go through vet school without. So I thought it would be important to let you guys know what they are. If there is a vet school essential that I didn't mention in this video that you use all the time, definitely let me know down below because other vet students can see what your essentials are as well. With that being said, I just wanted to say thank you again for watching and supporting these videos. It honestly means the world to me and I'm so happy that I can bring you guys along through my my vet school journey. Okay, this video has been long enough. I'm gonna wrap it up now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!